Hello students, welcome again to our biology class this week. In our lesson this week, we'll be looking at the terrestrial habitat. The terrestrial habitat. Last week, we looked at the aquatic habitat. So this week, we'll be concentrating on the terrestrial habitat. What are our learning objectives? That at the end of this class, you should be able to list four types of terrestrial habitats. You should also be able to describe the characteristics of each of these terrestrial habitats and recognize some adaptive features of the plants and animals in these habitats. Terrestrial habitats or land are divided into four. The first one marsh, second one forest, we have grassland and we have the arid land. These are the four types of terrestrial habitats. In our lesson on biotic communities last term, we discussed some of these habitats as one of the major biomes in the world. So we discussed them. So our lesson will be to throw more light, to make more emphasis on the adaptive features of plants and animals in these habitats as we discussed last term. So we have the first one, the marsh. The marsh is a lowland, a lowland habitat that is constantly flooded, and most of the time it is waterlogged. Just as you can see, the marsh is always constantly flooded, and it always waterlogged. We call a marsh. It is the only habitat that we said is a transitional habitat. What do I mean by a transitional habitat? It lies in between the aquatic habitat and the terrestrial habitat. It lies between terrestrial and aquatic habitat because some part of it you see, you see land, you, you see land while some parts of the you see flooded water. So this are uh, the reason why we say that the marsh habitat is a transitional habitat. What are the characteristics of marsh habitat? I've said earlier that it is a lowland habitat that is constantly flooded. The second one, it has soft with waterlogged soil with pools of standing water. And again, it has high relative humidity. Apart from having high relative humidity, the marsh contains a lot of decaying organic matter which are made up of fallen leaves and dead plants and animals. See, the presence of these large quantities of decaying organic matters and the absence of oxygen in this habitat brings about the production of a lot of foul smelling gases in the habitat. So that if you come close to the habitat, you perceive some gases that seems like the smell of a rotten egg. You see the, you know, some gases like hydrogen sulfide ammonia and methane in large quantity here because of the high rate of decaying substances and the absence of oxygen in this habitat marshes also they have low light intensity they have low light intensity and i have to remind you that we have two types of marshes we have the salt water marshes and we have the fresh water marshes these are the two types of marshes that we have. Adaptive features of organisms in the marshes. The first one, most plants they have well developed and large interconnecting air spaces. They have large and well developed interconnecting air spaces. So through these structures, air can be able to diffuse in through the stomata of the leaves and lentil cells of the breathing roots. That we call pneumatophores. So air will diffuse from these particular openings into the submerged areas. Another one, we, the air spaces in the central portion of the roots swell up. The swelling up of these roots brings about anchorage. The plants to be able to anchor very well in the soil. When these roots swell, they will be able to stick, so seek for support in the, in, from the soil. Through that process, they are able to anchor very well. 
most animals here are burrowing animals most of them they are burrowing animals and most animals that live inside the mud of marshes are either anaerobes or have high tolerance of low oxygen either they can be able to undergo respiration in the absence of oxygen or they have a very high tolerance of using small little amounts of oxygen to undergo respiration if we look at a, a, a food chain in a marsh we see that we have grasses there from grasses we will be able to see grasshopper as the primary consumer from primary consumer we will see frog as the secondary consumer and secondary consumer we will see crocodile as a tertiary consumer if we talk about a detritus food chain we can see the detritus as the as the producer there from there we we'll see worms as the primary consumer from worms we we'll see fishes as secondary consumer and second from secondary consumer we we'll see man as the tertiary consumer remember that we said that this particular habitat is submerged or is flooded or waterlogged so we have aquatic habitat there and we have a dry land too terrestrial so it's intercon interconnection of the two habitats that's why i said earlier that is a transitional habitat the second one is the forest the forest is a plant community a plant community in which trees are the dominant species just as we discussed last time some of the plants that we can see in the forest always tall trees what are the adaptive features of plants and animals in the forest forest plants have well developed system for the absorption of water and attachment to the soil and apart from this they possess supporting tissues here you see some supporting tissues like sclerenchyma and xylem for support they have high content of these supporting tissues and again, they possess stomata and lenticel for gaseous exchange and control of water loss. The presence of these two openings are there for control of water loss. And plants here have adaptation for climbing. Here you see such, uh, such as scrambling, twining, and the presence of hook and suckers that they can be able to use to attach themselves. We also have the plants that grow in the, sh in the shade of the continuous canopy of the rainforest. They have adaptation for carrying out photosynthesis in dim light. Because in the forest, we have tall trees that will create a canopy. What happens to the small plants there if we have little grasses? Which means that these ones that live under the canopy of the rainforest, they must have adaptation for carrying out photosynthesis in just a little light in the presence of a little sunlight most of the rainforest animals they have protective coloration to camouflage or disguise themselves from predators they will always have a, 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 a structure that will make them to blend with that of their environment so that they can be able to disguise themselves from predators tree dwelling animals here are adapted for climbing through the possession of prehensile tail they, they they always adapted to fly because they have the presence of a prehensile tail you, you see some for that have a tail that they will use wrapping around branches like the camellons you see the one that has a tail of grasping or suction pads on toes here you see toes to hold into trees they will use those ones to hold them. You see, grabs and scales, or even grabs tree trunks, like snakes. They will use their own to grab the tree snake uh, trunks very well. You see the ones that have st that are sticky or friction dicks on fingers that have very very good grip on smooth trunks, so that whenever they will be able to eat with those rough surfaces that they have, if they attach themselves on smooth trunk, they can be able to be firm on that particular surface so you can see that animals in these places uh, they have different structures that they can use in order to attach themselves there even those that can fly they have their they will possess the structures that will enable them to fly here we see
flying squirrel and birds. They have their structure that will enable them to fly very well. But they are there. They want they have the they have the wings that will enable them to fly very well. These are some of the structures or adaptive features that we will see in a forest. This third one is the grassland. Another name for grassland is savanna. A grassland is a plant community in which species of grasses are dominant. If you look at this particular area, you see that the dominant organisms here are species of grasses. Grasses. You only see scanty shrubs and trees around. You see them in small quantity. Why the dominant ones here are always the grasses? What are the adaptation of organisms in the savanna? Number one, they have they are able to shed up leaves in dry season to reduce transpiration and also to conserve water. Because when transpiration is being reduced, water will be conserved. So they shed their leaves. Plants that shed their leaves, we call them what? Remember last time we have deciduous plants. Plants that shed their leaves every annually. Now again, the possession of underground stem or drought resistant seed to last through the season. They possess underground stem or drought resistant seed so that they can be able to last through the season. And they have a thick or cocky back to protect the plant from bushfire and reduce transpiration. They have a thick back, a thick back that covers the stem so that it will protect the plant from bushfire and also reduce transpiration because here they have low amount of or, low, or small quantity of lenticels on the stems. The termite, the butte termitaria, or we sell in singular termitarium, which is designed to keep them cool always. While you see other animals, they burrow in the ground to avoid desiccation and bushfire. The large herbivores here move very fast and attract their predators. They move very fast. They are fast-moving animals that can so that they can be able to escape from their predators. Why the skin color of light yellowish brown with stripes in some carnivores like tiger? You, if you look at tiger, you see the skin color blends with that of its environment. So in order to prevent being captured by predators. So it, it tries to protect, have this common flag adaptive feature that will prevent them from being caught by their predators. Now the next one, which is the last type of habitat, is the arid land or desert. What is a desert or arid land? They are places of water scarcity or where water is permanently frozen. You see no water or even if you see water, little amount of water. This is what we call the arid land or desert. There are two main types of desert or arid land. We have the hot arid land or tropical desert. And we also have the other one cold arid land or cold desert. You can even see in some textbook they will call it tundra. Tundra. So in hot arid land or tropical desert, they experience little or no rainfall. Example is the Sahara Desert, which is the largest hot desert in the world. Why the second one we have cold arid land or cold desert or tundra? They are very cold with ice covering the surface of the ground throughout the year, except for a very short summer. That's when we talk about the cold arid desert. What are the adaptive features of organisms that lives in the desert? We discussed this last week. Uh, we discussed this last time. And I will implore you to visit your notes on biotic communities. Identify these adaptive features of arid land organisms. 
and visit your assignment you will see it there apply it be constructive and make your work to be very very explicit thank you and prepare yourself towards the test next week